Good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. May I extend a very warm uh, welcome to you to this uh, 10th uh, Sustainability uh, Summit of the uh, CII ITC Center of Excellence for Sustainable uh, Development. It so happens that it is also the 10th year of the center. When we began the center, sustainability was, you know, a little bit uh, diffuse thought. Uh, and people did not give too much of attention to this. But since then, with every passing year, sustainability has become a priority and a very compelling issue for everyone. I would strike a little bit different note from what the anchor spoke about. He gave a uni-dimension to sustainability by saying it is only environmental or climate change related sustainability. To my mind, sustainability has and had always had three dimensions. There is the competitive and financially sustainable dimension. There is the job creating, social asset forming dimension. And then there is the environmental asset creating dimension. Of course, with the conference of parties that is now coming shortly, uh, COP21, climate change is at uh, center stage. And it is also evident that the rate of change in climate is exacerbating the sustainability of the other two dimensions as well. But there is very little you can do with climate change overnight. It has, because over a period of time, ever since Industrial Revolution from 1850, industrial world has been emitting uh, greenhouse gases into the environment. And now the consequences are most adverse for the developing nations such as India. The other day I was reading that the cumulative emissions of uh, India from 1850 to now only constitute 3% in the environment, whereas Europe has 40%, United States of America has uh, 25%. But we are the ones who are likely to get affected the most because climate change has already begun to create havoc in our society. Extreme uh, uh, climate events are now, the other, the May and June this year were the hottest years, hottest months uh, in this year, and many lives are lost because of high temperature. Uh, rain patterns have changed. So, climate change obviously is a very important dimension, but it is a dimension that can only be managed into the future. But we should have begun the work yesterday. So this is such an important dimension and we have today amidst us the Minister for Environment and Climate Change with us. When he walked in, he said, Ek saal ho gaya, because he was with us last year. So time has flown. Earth is going around the sun relentlessly. It's not stopping to think. And a year goes by, just like that. So we had to tell him, yes, one year is gone. And the way the center has been functioning is in a synthesized manner. It has been making business aware building capacity of the business, creating thought leadership, building new knowledge, and preparing the business for 
managing sustainability in a unified manner. I think there is a lot that can be learned by the center and by others from the way the minister works. Now, I'll first give you an example of how it was, his ministry was functioning earlier. His ministry was functioning that any proposal that came here, right, if it affected the forest or it affected anywhere the environment, then it was not allowed to go through. The superordinate dimension, the sustainability dimension, which is sustainable development, as a goal was forgotten. People were more focused on their function, the functions of the ministry. Ever since the minister has come, he has found ways and means of optimizing both objectives, the contribution to climate, the forest dimension, and also the business sustainability dimension, the dimension of creating infrastructure, the dimension that will create jobs in our country. So thinking in a unified, wholesome manner is exactly what we at the center and Seema Arora has been teaching others is to think sustainability in a common manner and innovate and innovate in a manner that you find new models of business to create a strategy that creates synergy between these three dimensions so that over a period of time these three dimensions will converge and give you higher competitiveness than in the past give you better control in terms of environmental management and emissions into the atmosphere and enable you to add more to the social asset of our society and create more jobs. With every passing year, everybody knows that the challenges at the global level and also at the Indian level are only increasing. Now people are saying that by 2030, you know, water shortage or water demand will exceed by 40% of demand. And that agriculture requirement or food output requirement will increase by 50 percent and that the wattage, water will become a very serious problem. In India, this problem is going to be a multiplier of that problem because our population is increasing. Our young people are looking for jobs. 12 million people are coming into the job market and finding only 2 million dignified jobs. So there are serious issues. There are issues of water. There are issues of sustainable agriculture and so on and so forth. So going back to his ministry, we had asked for our paper mills capacity to be doubled in the same location where we were, in a place called Bhadrachalam in Andhra Pradesh. The reason we wanted to do it only in the same location was to become more competitive. Incidentally, we are the greenest mill in the country and we are world class in that dimension in terms of water usage, emissions, everything. So this is what we wanted to do. And we also grow, help farmers to grow trees and we've got 200,000 hectares of social forestry to supply wood for baking paper. So when it went to the ministry, when he was not there, they said, this is one industry that need not be here. It can be anywhere. They forgot. We, we are looking for only uh, two, three, four hundred acres of land next to our plant so that we could scale it up so that we can compete with the Chinese. But they said, no, you can do it somewhere else. But they pe those people at that time did not think holistically. They did not think competitiveness. They only thought forest or whatever some fictional forest which did not exist there. So we have to think in a unified manner. And we in ITC, at least I promote, optimize compromises 
so that you get an optimized superordinate result which has all the dimensions that you are looking for. So ladies and gentlemen, this is what the center has, has been doing over the last 10 years and I would like to congratulate Seema Arora and her team that they have been preparing Indian industry for managing an increasing challenge of tomorrow. Our minister, I watch him very carefully. He is a very cool listener. He listens very intently, but he then homes in to the meat of the point very quickly. The other day, he made the observation that the global society should abandon you know, conspicuous consumption, wasteful consumption, and adopt sustainable lifestyle. And he also echoed our Prime Minister's uh, uh, sentiment that climate management versus climate justice, because India has only contributed to 3% of global emissions and we are you know, holding the baby today. And this does not mean that we should not contribute because we should lend our complete might but, and we hope, that COP15 is an ambitious settlement but an equitable settlement. Those who have more capacity, who have more finances, who have more technology will take on a bigger and bigger uh, 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 responsibility. Uh, in terms of unified solutions, and since the minister is here, I would like to offer some comments. Now water is going to be a big problem. Now let us look at food. We waste about 30 to 40 percent of food. And for as long as I have known, we have promoted food processing industry. We've always wanted a cold chain, but we've always bemoaned the fact that this cold chain has not emerged and that this food processing industry has not got the dimensions that, that is required to manage this large wastage that goes up to 40, 50, thousand crores. The reason is not that there is no investment. The reason is ours is a poor country. And if you want people to not cook at home but have processed food and pay for the extra labor, extra depreciation, extra handling of material, extra storage, extra transportation, extra in retailing in a packaged, suitably packaged form, then they need more purchase power. And on top of that, if you're going to tax it at the state level, at the central level, by 15 or 16 percent, then food processing is not going to grow. So we continue to have food process, uh, f fruit and, and, and uh, vegetable that is processed only 2 to 4 percent. Whereas if you go to Far East and, and uh, go to Brazil, it goes up to 60, 70, and the developed countries even 80 percent. So what is the answer? To my mind, sir, the answer lies, food should have no tax. We should actually salute those who give up their food cooking at home and buy processed food and provide jobs for others, rather than pick up a little bit of tax because so little is processed and put the cart before the horse. So this is one area. The other area is uh, agroforestry. You know, some time ago, somebody said, we, you know, we want to protect our forests, so we will import wood at zero duty. So, uh, because this is not agriculture, this is a uh, tree. So as a result of which, you know, Every hotel, including this hotel or all the hotels that we build, is cheaper to import furniture from China. Now, this is not a rocket science to make furniture, but nobody can make it here because no wood is grown here. 
So instead of importing wood, you import furniture. So lots of carpenters, lots of people who should have had jobs, don't have jobs. Because we wanted to have this measure to protect the forest rather than have a measure to multiply people who will or incentivize growing of wood. So ladies and gentlemen, the center is here to think of sustainability. The first dimension will always be competitiveness to make in India, to, to invite capital to India. Competitiveness is extremely important. The other two dimensions are as important as the first dimension and we have to find ways and means of how these three can be interlocked in our strategy and our thinking, in our objective formation and in the way we conduct our business so that synergy can be got amongst the three. Uh, I also welcome uh, my friend uh, Dr. Subir Gokaran uh, who's a think tank by himself. I uh, had the good opportunity of uh, serving on the RBI board uh, while he used to expound on, on the economic uh, issues uh, and I'm waiting to hear from him. The minister is in a hurry so I will close now and request the minister to give us the benefit of uh, his advice and his counsel and his knowledge and after that uh, once he goes away the Mr. Dr. Gokaran will give us the benefit of his advice. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, long live the center and may it contribute much more. I also want to, before concluding, want to say this is the 10th year of ITC being carbon positive and 13th year of it being water positive and 9th year of it being waste recycling positive. And this is our, we've got a report here before the minister goes away, we'll ask him, Aapke kar kamlo se, usko release kar dijega. Or 12th year of the highest order uh, sustainability report according to the GIR. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.